good morning there, Sweet Peas, Basic Prepper Mom Myra. So I want to talk about preparedness as um, kind of was brought to my attention from a friend of mine who lives back in, uh, back east, I don't want to say where, back east, and was impacted by the hurricane. Um, herself, she is a... Uh, I would say a preparedness type person like she's along those lines like she knows that she knows how to do things let's just say she knows how to do things um, and I was having a um, messaging conversation conversation messaging conversation with her and they were impacted with not not a tremendous amount um, they did have power outages widespread power outages and I think her power outage I want to say a week, week and a half, something like that, um, give or take. And they were not able to get out. There were, you know, down trees and there was some flooding, but not a tremendous amount, like not destructive, but they just weren't able to get out and about. They also were not able to use because of being power outages and stuff. Even if they did make it to the store, they were not able to use their cart, right? So when i was having a conversation just checking in on her making sure that she's doing okay um she had said that and they raise their own food too so she gardens um she also raises uh, some meat animals as well and one of the things that she had said was that she wishes or for next time knowing it basically when when a disaster like that happens and I've talked about that before when a disaster happens like that that is not horribly traumatic and we're not talking about like the floods in North Carolina like those those are like there is nothing you can do to prepare for that when your house is literally floating away like there there is just no mental emotional or physical preparedness that would absolutely ground you and prepare you for that type of situation. Um, so we're just talking about you have a natural disaster or you have some sort of whatever disaster. And um, it is somewhat, maybe somewhat short term, but not completely devastating, but it is an emergency, okay? Um, she had made the comment that for next time or, or going forward and being prepared that she would have several things on hand that she did not have. Uh, one of the things is she would definitely have more non-perishable foods. Absolutely, 100%. She would also have solar chargers for your phones. Um, and there was one more thing and I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, there was one more thing. Oh, her, she's on a well. When the power went out, their well pump went out. She had no way to get water out of that well. So the water is there. You have a well. You just don't have a way to get the water out of the well because there's no power for the pump. Now, there is a, um, and I'm going to actually share the company with her there's actually a couple of different companies but I believe legacy foods I believe it's legacy um, has a um, kind of a hand pump for wells that's what it's meant for that you can add line to so a lot of people I don't know where she's list I'm guessing that her well because of where she's at back east is probably not extremely deep uh, their water table is is pretty I think close to the surface so I don't think their well would be really really deep now in Northern California when you're up in the hills and the mountains and stuff you can have wells that are a few hundred feet deep like ridiculous um, so they've got line that you can actually add or hose that you can actually add on to get the hose down to that um, that length there is also another way um, it's not an actual pump. They're like long, uh, cylindrical buckets 
and you basically drop them down in the well on a string, however much string you need, and fill them up with water and then pull them back up to the top. So that's, that's another way as well. So I'm gonna share stuff with her so that she can be better prepared next time. Um, and those are things that you, you don't necessarily, like you think you're prepared, you think that you've got everything that you need until something happens. So I would, and I told her, I said, yeah, we've got solar chargers, you know, small, very inexpensive solar chargers. They're not the best in the world, but they will work in a pinch. Um, they might take a while to actually charge something up, but they work. Um, I've also got solar lights I shared with her, um, along with some other, um, some other things that, um, that we have. We are, I am fortunate enough that my, my husband bought me a freeze dryer about a year and a half ago or so. And so we are able to freeze dry, um, a lot of our stuff. Um, I have not done a lot of freeze drying. Mostly what I've freeze dried has been, that have been successful, have been meats. Um, and not raw meat. I cook them first and then freeze dry them. Um, but I usually do my freeze drying in the winter time because the freeze dryer is in the house. And we have a very small house. And it heats up when the pump kicks on. It puts out a lot of heat. So usually I do that. We actually are getting ready to move uh, move it to the shed because we just redid the roof and it's good. So it'll be protected um, so that I can freeze dry more out there as well. And plus it's super loud in the house when the pump kicks on. So hopefully being out there, um, I can actually start freeze drying more things. Um, But I, I definitely am going to be freeze drying a lot more food. Um, I think that's going to be my best bet, even if it's, you know, buying canned food in the store and then freeze drying it because obviously freeze drying is going to give you a longer lifespan. Um, and I know canned goods are not necessarily the most nutritious. I get that, but, um, it's, it's better than nothing and it definitely will do in a pinch. So, um, and I think that freeze drying is going to give us the more bang for our buck as far as preparedness. Um, as far as the other thing that's nice too, is when you're freeze dry food, it makes it very, very lightweight and you can put it in the mylar bags. It's way easier to store. It's a lot, um, lighter. You can put a whole bunch in, you know, tubs or however you're storing it and it's not going to make it super heavy. Um, so it's not taking up a lot of space and you're not having to lug around a whole bunch of canned stuff. And if you do happen to get in a situation, um, where you are having to bug out, um, you're able to grab those freeze dried packs and put them in, um, bags or tubs or whatever that is not going to weigh you down either, uh, versus cans. So, um, definitely going to be looking at doing a lot of that this winter. Um, but I just thought it was interesting to share that perspective that she was like, oh my gosh, we've been through a disaster. We've been through an emergency and these are, this is what's lacking in my stockpile. So what I would do is I would suggest at this time, while you still can, pretend like there's an emergency, pretend like you have no power. Okay. We, we have our power shut off. What, what is our first thing that we need to do? Kind of run through that drill. Even if you're running through it in your mind and going, okay, if our power shut off, um, for a week, for two weeks, for a month, how are we going to get through? What do we need to get through? Um, and just start from there. If you haven't started already, that's really a good place to start with. Um, but I thought that was some really good insight as far as, Hey, thought I was prepared, thought we had everything and turns out we didn't. So, um, that is what I have to talk about today. Hope you guys have a wonderful, amazing day. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out. I hope you guys have a wonderful, amazing day and we will talk to you later.